the Arctic Circle. You've got to be a bit strange to want to come here for a visit. You've got to be crazy to want to live here. Yet this is one of the most northern outposts of human civilization. In this blasted corner of northern Canada, temperatures sink beyond minus 45 Celsius. It's simply one of the least hospitable places on Earth. So why have people come here? On this forbidding Arctic island sits a volcano. In the floor of the volcano, vast quantities of diamonds are buried. This is the Diavik diamond mine. So how do you get a diamond from beneath a frozen volcano? How do they do it? It all starts with a bang. Every week, half a million tons of rock are blasted out of this crater. And from all that rock, every week comes just enough diamonds to fill a miner's hat. Once the scene of violent eruptions, the volcano has gradually been transformed into one of the world's richest deposits of a girl's best friend. They call the veins of volcanic rock the kimberlite pipes. Kimberlite pipe is just a round pipe of lava flow that comes up millions and millions of years ago that uh, we're actually drilling in an old volcano. But getting the diamonds out of this volcano is no mean feat. After using explosives to blast out another chunk of volcanic crater, it's time for the big trucks to go into action. These enormous vehicles weigh a staggering 235 tons each, and most of them are driven expertly and carefully by women. First time I drove this, I was kind of scared, but later on I got used to it. The trucks crawl cautiously up icy tracks which have been gouged out of the side of the crater to deliver their precious loads to the processing plant. It may look like a pile of rock, but in every journey out of the crater, each truck is carrying an average $70,000 worth of diamonds. The majority of the world's diamonds are destined for industrial use, but most of the precious stones from Diavik's volcano end up gracing the neck or fingers of some lucky woman. To get at these gems, thousands of tons of volcanic ore must be crushed and reduced to bite-sized chunks less than 25 millimeters across. The problem is, how do you break the rock down into small chunks without damaging the diamonds inside? In Diavik's vast diamond plant, the volcanic rock passes through a series of crushing machines. These monster crushers are fine-tuned so that they act on the softer rock, leaving the diamond-rich rock intact. In the control room, an operator watches out for problems as the rough diamonds are separated from the rock. The chunks of ore are gradually reduced in size and the diamond-rich rocks are filtered out. Then the rocks are washed with water and a corrosive substance known as magnetic oil sand which consists of bitumen, sand, and clay. These are precious stones, which are still attached to tiny chunks of worthless rock. Now these thousands of small stones are transported under armed guard 300 kilometers south to one of the most heavily fortified complexes in North America. To finally separate diamond from stone, you need to heat the rocks and then treat them with an acid so corrosive you really need a robot to do the job safely. Now they can be weighed and sent to be cut and polished. To transform a rough diamond into a glistening jewel, each one has to be examined by the factory foreman. He's effectively the architect of the diamond. 
carefully analyzing each stone, looking for flaws and features. He decides how to cut the stone to create the most elegant, symmetrical shape while discarding the least amount of diamond. He's helped by a computer that looks right through the stone. Once the best cut is marked, it's sent for cutting. The problem now is, how do you cut the hardest mineral known to man? Well, it takes a diamond to cut a diamond. A diamond-tipped steel wheel spinning at 12,000 revolutions per minute is used to cut through the rock, slowly and carefully. A single cut can take 12 hours to complete. Once cut, the diamonds are sent to the bruting room to be rounded. This is achieved by grinding two diamonds against each other. Once the grinding machines have done their job, the facets are added to each gem. Now the diamonds need to be brilliantiered. This is when they're polished to sparkle like the stars in the night sky. This is achieved by using a machine called a skate. It's held against a cast iron disc coated with diamond powder and running at 35 RPM. After its polish, the diamond goes off for a final quality control check. I like the idea that someone out there is wearing my stone. I like the idea of other people wearing it. Next stop, a high-class jewellery store, where the rocks will be admired by women and burn holes in the pockets of men. But no wonder these little rocks cost so much. They've taken an extraordinary journey. Sifted, crunched, cut, ground, and dipped in acid. An incredible journey that all began with a hole in the ground. <laughs>